So now the question is, what if we want to do a little more complicated scenarios? What if when we turn the light on, we want the clip to change its pitch slightly? Um, or what if we want it to change its volume slightly every time we play it? Right now, we don't have any of those controls because we're using Unity's built-in play clip at point method. Uh, but we want to make something even more custom. So what we're going to do is go back to the audio manager and we're going to create what's called an overload for this method. And all that means is we're making a second method that has the same name, but it takes different parameters, different arguments. Um, and when you call that method, you can choose which overload that you're calling based on what information you're putting in. So we're going to go down a few lines public void play sound pure mind and this is going to take a couple different arguments than before this is going to take some similar ones the audio clip called clip the game object called object to play on It's going to take a float, which is another word for basically a decimal number, a floating point number. Uh, that's going to be called pitch. It's going to be take another float called volume. And it's going to take a third float called spatial blend. And we're going to set the spatial blend to default to 1F. So what that does is it makes that final parameter optional. Uh, so when you call this method, if you don't put any data for spatial blend, it will automatically set it to 1. If you do put in data, then it will override that default value and put it to whatever you want it to be. Up above, we have a public game object field called audio source prefab. That is the prefab that I set up earlier uh, that all it has on it is an audio source. And we're going to use that as our new audio sources. When you do play clip at point, it creates an audio source for you. Well, we're trying to mimic that behavior. So we need an audio source that we can create anytime we want. We're going to create a local variable of type audio source called my audio source and we're going to instantiate the audio source prefab once we instantiate that we're going to call a git component of type audio source And that's going to be our, our custom audio source for the rest of the function. So basically, a breakdown of what's happening here. Um, we're going to need to be accessing the audio source that's in the prefab that we're instantiating. So we're instantiating the prefab here, and we're getting the audio source component off of it here, and we're storing that in this local variable called my audio source. Then we're going to set its pitch. So we're going to do my audio source dot pitch is set to pitch. Now the first pitch, the my audio source dot pitch, that is the pitch of the audio source that we just added into the game. Now the second pitch is actually the name of the local variable that we created up here this float. So don't get those confused because they're very different. Um, but what this is saying is that we're going to take the pitch that is given to our function whenever we call it and we're going to set our new audio sources pitch to that value. We're going to do the same thing with volume. So we'll do my audio source dot volume is set to volume.
Same thing with spatial blend. My audio source dot spatial blend is set to spatial blend. Now, like I said earlier, this will set it to one by default if we don't override that with our own values. So now we actually need to create a clip or load the clip into this audio source. So we want to do my audio source dot clip is set to clip. And we we have to pass the clip that we're going to be using from the other script into this function. After that, we're simply going to play the audio source. My audio source dot play. Then we want to keep in mind that games can sometimes have a lot going on. And so you need to save as many resources as possible. When you instantiate a prefab, it sticks around. It doesn't really go anywhere and you want it to clean itself up after a while. So what we're going to do is we're going to call the unity destroy function. So we're going to say destroy. Um, and it takes several arguments. First, it takes the game object that we want to destroy. Then it takes an amount of time that you want to wait before you destroy it. So first, we're going to do my audio source dot game object. And we're, so that's the game object that we want to destroy. Uh, next is a float that's an amount of time that we want to wait. So we're going to wait my audio source dot clip dot length. So that's going to make sure that it waits before it waits until the clip is done playing before it destroys itself. So now we should hear something. If we keep in mind that the light bulb script is still playing this first play sound. Uh, so we want it to play the second one. So we have to go and give it extra arguments. So for the next overload, after the game object, it takes a float pitch. So we're going to play it at 1 F. And the volume, we're going to play at 1 F. And the spatial blend, for now, let's actually set it to 0. Uh, because we want it to be a 2D sound, we're going to change that soon. So if we go and do the same thing down here, then we should be able to hear that still in the game. Perfect. Now here's where things get a little more interesting. So like I said earlier, if you want to change anything about the way the sound is played, now you can, now that we have a custom function. So say I want to randomize the pitch. I don't want to play the same pitch every time or the same volume every time. I want it to be slightly different. So there are a couple ways to do this. The easiest way in this implementation is to go where the sound is being called. Find your pitch parameter and set up a random.range. How you do that is random.range takes several parameters. First is the minimum, second is the mass maximum. So the minimum, let's set it to 0.9f. And the maximum, let's set it to 1.1f. The standard pitch is 1, of course. So we can copy this if you want and put it in the turn off sound as well. Then if we go to Unity and play, then you can hear that the sounds are changing pitch every time.
very slightly. Uh, now we can obviously go and increase that value. If we go into light bulb and we increase this to say 1.5 and the minimum to 0.5, you're going to hear a much larger variation. There you go. Now you're randomizing pitch. Now this can be a little bit unruly um, to be to have to go into each game call and do it from there. So instead, what we can do is we can take the same random dot range and we can put it in our audio manager script. So we want to say go where the pitch is and first so we set the pitch to pitch right but then we can add add a value to that it's a float it's just a number so what we can do is beforehand create another local variable called uh, of type float called random pitch we're going to make a random dot range of negative 0.1 f to positive point two f. Let's put zeros in front of those. So it's going to pick a number between negative point one and point two. Then we're going to add that to pitch. So we can go in and change these back to one. Now, we're not setting up any random in the light bulb script. We're only setting up random in the audio manager script. It's doing it automatically. So it will do it for every sound that you use play sound peer mind with. There we go. If you're a music producer, subscribe to our channel and stay up to date on the latest PureMind tutorial videos, track breakdowns, elite sessions, and more. Visit us at PureMind.com.